Dag gummit. <laughs> oh, that was great. I may have gone too far in a few places. Hello there, everyone. Welcome to RMR, and today we are going to be watching Star Wars Origins, and uh, apparently this is a Mark Hamill-approved fan film. Uh, he claims that it is an epic masterpiece, and uh, I've only seen this once, and it's actually been a couple of years, so there's very little that I actually remember about this. So it's not a, even though it's not a fresh review, um, it is pretty dang close to it. Um, make sure you hit like and subscribe before we get started. We have episodes that premiere every Tuesday, and I believe next week we are gonna be checking out No Disintegrations, which is a, I believe it is a sequel to a previous fan film that focuses on Boss. And this episode, has a lot of Boba Fett in it. So uh, we'll, we'll be jumping into that next Tuesday. And uh, also make sure you check out my Patreon page where you get exclusive content that nobody else is able to watch except for you. So check it out, enjoy the fun, join the Golden Guy Pictures family. And uh, that said, let's jump into this episode. No galaxy? It's already really impressive. Oh, a little trainer droid. a lot of detail in those props, set pieces. was buried. Who used to tell us that? Like the classics. Don't know. Are those technologies just old for memes? That's not me. It's a space station. Of 
They need no father. How much do they know? My father gave you the map to pass on, didn't he? Knew that there is power in the truth. He was weak. War is here. This could unite us. Make us realize that we're part of something bigger. Something outside this world. We need a change. I agree. The world has changed. Our family has spent too long out here in the sand as slaves to secrets long forgotten. No longer. And I have you to thank, Uncle. You have opened my eyes. I did not realize that knowledge to the right pile could be so lucrative. They are already on their way. Find the Americans! Tear this camp apart until you find the artifact. And then burn this place to the ground. said was true to me about the Nazis on the way. We've already been here much longer than expected. They come up on us while we're in the middle. Don't worry about me. It's too important. It's bigger than us. It all is to me. Sitting up in a dark corner room is sitting up in the light. That's why we're both safe.
isn't welcome here. father had such naive notions. I had to kill him. I was going to let my men have their way, but I like your fire, American girl. We'll do this quick, if you tell me the truth. What else did you remove from the temple? I know you have it. Search me. Impressive. Wait, so is she a is she a Jedi or something? Because she was using the force and everything. Tell me, 
is that when you work by the entrance, it's impossible. But tell me the odds. Don't be foolish. You need to tell people what we found here. It's all for nothing. There's got to be another way. That is awesome. Man, it just gave me chills. I got like tears in my eyes. Wow. Ellie. I love you. Oh. That gummit. <laughs> oh, that was great. Whew. <clears throat> All right, folks. Uh, sorry about the costume change. Um, I actually had work, uh, but now I'm back, and uh, I want to dive in to. Star Wars Origins. So we have uh, Phil Hawkins as the writer and director of this film. It's produced by Gary Cohen, starring Marie Everett, my boy Jamie Costa, love that guy, and Hadrian Howard. Uh, the director of photography was David Meadows, and we have Richard Bodgers as the composer. Now this is an epic masterpiece. I completely agree with Mark Hamill. Um, I want to talk about, uh, before I really dive into the different aspects of this film that I enjoyed, I want to start off by saying that um, this film made me tear up and it gave me chills. It made me respond and feel things and, and I, it's very rare when I feel that for a fan-made production. Um, so regardless of how uh, a great or, or bad a film can be, if it makes me feel 
what the director is wanting me to feel, feel it's effective. It's effective storytelling and it's effective directing. Um, so right off the bat, these guys did a fantastic job just delivering the goods, um, I guess, uh, is what I'm trying to say. Um, and I want to kind of take the time to speak of the high points that helped get me to that emotional state at the end of the film. And one of the things that I that I really enjoyed in this was the cinematography. It felt very uh, Indiana Jones. It just felt uh, really 80s. And I think they were certainly, I mean, when you're making kind of a, uh, a combination of a, of a Star Wars, Indiana Jones kind of a thing, um, it would only make sense that your cinematography resembles that energy. And I think they did a good job, uh, not, a, not a fantastic job, um, you know, if it, if, if we were in an ideal world where, you know, everything was cheap, you know, if you really wanted to go out, go all out, I would shoot this in 35 millimeter. Um, but you know, they, they went the digital route and you got some really fun lens flare stuff, kind of JJ Abrams esque. Um, so in those areas, it was like those, those weren't necessarily, um, eighties type, uh, uh, cinematography but the framing was very fun and especially that opening shot when they're on the dunes and you have the the cult kind of uh, gearing up and that and they have the trucks and everything it felt very Indiana Jones so great job with that um, the sound design I thought was was good um, especially towards the end I'm really gonna be talking a lot about the end of this film because that's where I really felt um, uh, the most of uh, what this film was supposed to be. Um, I would say the first half was, was good, um, impressive, uh, just in scale, um, but it wasn't until the second half that I was really just immersed into the story and just blown away by, by everything. Um, so sound design was cool. Um, I thought the acting was good. Um, uh, the directing was, I would say, the best part of this film. Um, the vision and the concept of this entire idea was just so strong. They had an idea and they followed through. And all of the details was uh, so well thought out. Um, uh, it just felt like it just felt like they they went in with a specific purpose and vision in mind and they weren't going to compromise in order to accomplish it. Um, and you really just get a sense that the director, Phil Hawkins, you really, really get a sense that he's passionate about 70s and 80s cinema and the way actors interact with each other and their environment. Um, even though um, it, the acting may have been hurt by the characteristics of the 80s-esque uh, film. Uh, uh, I think that is part of the experience. Like you would never say that, that uh, Mark Hamill as Luke Skywalker is Oscar worthy. Um, uh, just because with that high spirited, energetic, uh, character structure and the way the lines are executed. Um, it's just supposed to be fun, uh, high energy uh, performances that you would see in, in Flash Gordon um, or, or, uh, or silent films like uh, you know, uh, 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 Buster Keaton, you know, things, things like that. So I think even though the acting was not as good um, as something more modern could have been, where you get more of a modernized performance, um, I think that is simply in part due to the goal of accomplishing an 80s-esque type of a short. And I think that they balanced that pretty well. Um, so I'm not really going to nitpick the performances just because I know that they were wanting to make this film feel like it's from the 80s or 70s. Um, uh, I also think that um, the music was good, but again, only in the second half. I did feel like um, 
the first half, the mu the soundtrack felt a little too synthy or keyboard-esque, I guess. Um, I'm not musically gifted, so I, forgive me for my lack of terminology, but um, there were times where I could tell I wasn't listening to an orchestra and the, you know, I could just, I could hear the keyboards, uh, the, the keys being pressed, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but again, like the second half of that film just blew me away. Everything from the music to the camera work of the, the Star Destroyer rising out of the, the sand and, and uh, uh, Marie Everett's character, I think her name was Ellie, you know, she's beautiful performance. She's, she's got the tears and she's got her child and uh, it was all just like on point right there at the end. Um, I just wish it was, it was consistent throughout the entirety of the short. Um, I, I also want to talk about um, the details. I'm gonna jump into the highs and then I'm gonna get into the lows. The details were everywhere. I mean, you could probably watch this in slow-mo and you could pick out different things going on. Like you saw the trainer droid, you saw drawings of the Purgle from Star Wars Rebels. Uh, you saw different sketches of, of characters and moments in the Star Wars saga in that cave that Jamie char Jamie's character was in. Um, there just seemed to be so much attention to detail. Um, and it was just very, it was just very compelling and it made me uh, want to hit pause. Like there's so many times where I just wanted to hit pause and just like dive deeper into the frame and see what's going on. Um, so they really sucked me in. They really rubbed me into the story. Uh, so they did a great job, but, <coughs> <coughs> sorry guys, but, that said, I do feel like some of the details were taken a little too far. And I say that because if you look at the sketches in the cave, you're, you're, you're looking at paintings of, like for example, you see a painting of Luke and Yoda on Dagobah. And there, and at least in the movies, there is nobody else around except for them, uh, except for R2. Um, but um, what I what I noticed was that you saw a lot of those uh, very specific Star Wars moments. And my nitpick about that is, it almost it almost makes you. It almost takes you out of it simply from the standpoint of how how could there have been anyone around to document these events? Because they had depictions and sketches in the rocks from all six movies and even the shows. Um, so it makes you wonder who actually was documenting these events, um, who was a common denominator in all of these events throughout Star Wars that would allow that person to do the sketches on the walls or to draw these, write down these documents or draw these sketches. Um, it would have been better if the moments that we see in the cave are a bit more generic and, uh, and vague uh, within the Star Wars universe, like the Death Star um, uh, or, um, you know, the Rebel Alliance symbol or the Republic symbol, you know, different things that could easily have been witnessed by common denominators, as opposed to having a very obvious sketch of Yoda on Luke's shoulder. Um, I think that that almost pulls you out because it's like, who would have been there to document that? Unless we're gonna say that R2 or C3PO was the person documenting these things. Um, but then again, it's like, okay, so how does he, how does he paint the walls? Or how does he write all these documents? You know, it's like, it, it opens the door for plot holes is all I'm really going to say. But they were still fun regardless. The details made it feel cohesive with the Indiana Jones uh, uh, characteristics of this film. Because of the, you could tell that they were kind of combining universes. Uh, and I think that was what was so fun about this concept was it's not a Star Wars Indiana Jones crossover. There are things about both that 
that you can obviously notice, but it's not like they're part of the same universe. The story, which I find so fascinating and it, and it just blows my mind, the story is that a Star Destroyer crashes on Earth and hundreds of years go by and people begin to discover that there is a whole galaxy out there full of history and art and, and, and uh, important historical people. And, uh, uh, and these people are discovering these artifacts and this woman, Ellie, and her husband or, or boyfriend, Walter, are kind of the, the only people trying to preserve these things or get, help people become aware of this other galaxy. And by the end of it, uh, we find out that Ellie is pregnant and Walter suggests naming their child George, which, which tells you that this woman, Ellie, gives birth to George Lucas, tells her son, George, about this galaxy far, far away from a long time ago. And he is, he writes Star Wars based on these artifacts that his parents found years back. Such a fun concept, right? Like it's just such a great idea. Obviously it's not like a, like a, 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 a like a true story, or is it? But uh, it's still just a fun idea that makes Star Wars and Indiana Jones so much more special and uh, reverent, you know, like, like George has had these ideas with him because his parents discovered these grand things on their adventures. Uh, just a really fun, heartwarming story. Um, uh, but really, those are my highs and lows. There's very few lows, and really they circle around the idea of uh, the music being a little too synth and keyboard at times, and then sometimes the, the, the details, the, 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 the little Easter eggs were a bit too detailed. Um, and I have other nitpicks, and I will dive into those on my Patreon page. So if you want to hear my complete uncensored thoughts about this film and you want to hear me dive in to this short and how uh, I think I could have potentially made it better, um, you can hop on Patreon and you can sign up for some of the cheapest tiers, which is as low as a dollar a month. Can't beat that. But all in all, this is a fantastic short. And so that said, I want to shift gears and talk about the Star Wars factor. Now, if if you have not heard of the Star Wars Factor, um, that is something that I uh, used to talk about a lot in my previous Rotten Melee Run reviews. Uh, and for some reason, I kind of slacked off, but I really want to dive back into it. And so essentially, the Star Wars Factor, uh, as I have sort of defined it, in my research of George Lucas's work, Star Wars is defined by three pillars, and they are in a specific order. So. Um, the first uh, pillar is story. George Lucas has made it all, has made it clear uh, many, many times that story was always the most important part of Star Wars when he was creating. The story was so grand that you that you couldn't avoid the spectacle uh, of the story. You had a great story, uh, but within that story are are world world building and, and different characters and aliens and that came with a sense of spectacle and because it was such a spectacle of a story George had to innovate the current technologies in order to accomplish his goal so the three pillars of Star Wars that make it special from other films is story spectacle and innovation and a good Star Wars fan film will capture these things pretty evenly. So all that said, Star Wars Origins gets a Star Wars Factor score of eight out of 10. Um, and the Star Wars Factor score uh, greatly influences what I give the Rotten Lady Run score. Um, the story, absolutely beautiful, very heartwarming, very hopeful, which is very, in store, uh, very important because Star Wars always has to ha have a sense of hope um, 
and it's and it has to be fun for kids where they can learn life lessons. So in that sense, um, they did a, they did a pretty good job of that. Um, but the story was great. The spectacle of this film was wonderful. It was such an enjoyable watch seeing the Indiana Jones characteristics combined with the Star Wars characteristics, and it just it brought such a visual stimulation to my experience. And although I cannot speak into the technologies that they used, I would have to dive deeper into their behind the scenes content. But what I can say is I have never seen a Star Wars fan film like this before. This is completely innovative in that sense. So uh, they nailed the story, they nailed the spectacle, and they did good on innovation just from my for, uh, uh, second time view. Combined with the Star Wars factor, combined with my emotional uh, experience towards the end of the film and all the highs and the lows, I'm going to give Star Wars Origins a Rotten Melu Run score of 80%. Uh, wonderful short guys. I think this was absolutely fantastic. Uh, you brought tears to my eyes. You sent chills down my spine. And that's what I want every time I watch a Star Wars film. And, and you know, I just, I always say this when I see a really good film like this, but this is the future. I genuinely believe that this is the future and that, and that people all over the country are going to find ways to tell the stories they want to tell. Um, especially with, uh, with Star Wars is right now, I think we are on the upside. We're, we're climbing up higher the, the, up the hill and we're, we're doing a lot better than how we used to. But there was a time when the fans were not being listened to. And so what did they do? They took matters into their own hands and they told the stories that they wanted to tell. Um, and I think as, as, we, as we learn more and more about independent filmmaking, we're gonna see more of this sort of stuff and I am all for it. And frankly, Disney can take some notes from these people. So anyways, great job guys. Wonderful film. Uh, if you're interested in seeing my deep dives on these films where you get my uncensored opinions and my nitpicks on how I would have actually improved these films and got that Rotten Millie Run score up higher, closer to 100%, check me out on Patreon. Again, the rates are really low, as low as a dollar a month. That is nothing these days. Um, so be sure to check those out. And as always, folks, may the force be with you. I want you to get out of this office right now. I'm sorry, Sam. No way. You brought no way. Out.